made a major impact on the world of melodic rock when their debut album was released back in 2005. That's Line of Fire. From the brand new album, Momentum, is out on the Tribunal Records label. Obsession, obsession. That, of course, being the song called Obsession. I'm pleased to say, joining me on the line, Mr. Sean Pallada. How's it going, Steve? Oh, it's going great. How are you? Doing well, man. Doing well. Jolly good. Um, it took a while, this second album, didn't it, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> what did we yeah, say? Took five me. years? <laughs> yeah, way too long. Way too long. We started work on it uh, in April of 06. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> yeah. We we ended up essentially we ended up recording the album twice. Right. Okay. So, you're gonna, now you got to explain that one. Well, we in, in April of '06 we picked up a permanent drummer. Uh huh. Well, we what, what we thought was going to be a permanent drummer, and uh, we started the record. We recorded 12 songs worth of drum tracks, and for various reasons, they sat around for a couple of months before we started trying to put guitars on them. And when we started putting guitars on them. We just we determined it didn't have the right vibe, the right feel that we were going for. So we ended up having to scrap all all twelve songs and start over. Mm-hmm. So uh, we did that, and we was like, well, while we're looking for a drummer, let's just start with the drum machine like we did last time. Right. Okay. So we started we started tracking bits with the clip track and the drum machine, and uh, not that was about the time about a year into that is when Nikki found out that he had cancer in his throat. So. Uh, course that that sidelined us for a bit absolutely uh so you know just things just kept happening to us it was really <laughs> weird you know the between that and my wife got sick and we had a really bad winter there at one point we couldn't get out to the studio and it was just so much stuff kept happening it was just it, it was almost like we were cursed how's nikki doing now nikki's doing great now he's doing very well now he's been cancer free now for quite a while all of his past few scans have been clear so uh he's, he's doing great yeah, that, that that really is good news. I mean, I know that that, oh, yeah. that sort of um, affects, you know, just so many people in this world. It's, it's, it's criminal, it really is. Oh, it really is. Terrible. Um, so the, 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 the drummer wasn't a spinal tap moment. I thought it would be for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, he was a great guy. He was really cool. It just, when we went, you know, after we, you know, sat with it for a couple of months and then started to put guitars on it, it just didn't have the vibe that we wanted, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, you know, fast forward past all the crazy stuff, and we we and we landed Jeremy Thomas, who is who you hear playing on the record, and he just he did a great job, in my opinion. I thought he did fantastic. He had the perfect amount of taste and and flash. Jeremy Thomas you know, rings so. a bell. Uh, Jeremy Thomas. Um, he played on the Wake and Jonah track that I did a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, he plays with uh, right now. I think he's playing with. Uh, a band called Baby Trip Switch. Ah, yes, that's why it rings a bell. There you go. Yeah, yeah that guy. <laughs> okay, yeah, that means uh, <laughs> he's also in a in a in a sort of Journey covers band as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, no. Oh, that's okay. Stephen Chesney. Ah, that's, okay. That's the guitar player. Okay. God, it's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It really is. I mean, um, we're yeah. all in North Carolina though, so we kind of you know we run into each other and stuff. So. Okay, fair enough. Um. With, with this, I mean, the, the songs themselves, they do seem like a, a, a sort of natural progression from the first album, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we really, you know, the last record, um, I think the last record overall had a couple of slightly heavier moments than this one does. Uh-huh. Uh, we really went for the melody on this one. We really wanted we really wanted the classic, just melodic vibe. Uh-huh. On this, so we didn't go overboard with the guitars. We didn't go overboard with the screams or anything like that. Um, we really wanted a classic kind of a 70s, you know, kind of a, a really warm vibe uh-huh. with the presence on it. And uh, it just just turned out the way it turned out. I feel like we, we, we achieved what we went after, you know? All right. I mean, does it also mean now that, uh, you know, that, that Line of Fire is more of a permanent band? Um, I would hope. <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean, this record took so long and it took so much out of us that when it, when it finally came out, we all exhaled, mm-hmm. you know, and now we're just kind of gathering ourselves to decide, you know, what we're going to do next. Mm-hmm. You know, Nikki's got a couple things he's working on. I've got a couple things I'm working on. Uh, we're talking about the next line of fire, but it probably won't, 
start coming to fruition until sometime next year. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but it's it's definitely something that you know we have we have Jeremy who has told us he's available to to play, and um, we have a bass player and we, we, that that have told us that he's available to play. So we could do it if we could manage our schedules mm-hmm. and, and, and pull it out. You know, I mean, obviously, never the, say never. You know, from my pers- my perspective, and it's something that people have asked about is live dates. Yeah, we've asked about that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every now and then, Nikki and I look at each other. It's like, so we're going to do this, and it's like we, we both we're both on the same page. We really, really want to. It's something we want to do. Right. But both of us have so much going on. It's just really hard to coordinate schedules because you know, as as you probably have heard from other people, making a record is one thing, but putting a band together and rehearsing and going out and doing it is something completely different. Mm-hmm. You know that 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 takes a, a a much heavier time commitment, and it takes a lot more uh, pooling of resources to pull all that together. You know, but it would it would uh, be a sh- it would be a shame if these you know the, the, these and tracks from the first album would never perform live. Oh, it would be a it would be a horrible shame. It'd be a horrible shame. We uh we after the first record came out, before we started Momentum, we actually pulled together a live band and we rehearsed for probably two months. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just wasn't working out. That's when we're like, you know what? Let's just make a record. <laughs> and then we started Momentum. Little did we know that Momentum would take as long as it took. But, yeah. Uh, that was that was the mentality at the time. See, the mentality at the time is okay. We've been doing this for a couple of months. It's not working out. We weren't going to keep the drummer and the and the bass player that we were using. So let's go ahead and make a record. And after the record, then we'll start rehearsing. Well, right. the record took five freaking years. <laughs> so now everything is just completely up in the air. Well, I sincerely hope number three doesn't take five years, because um, I'll, I'll probably be retired by then. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll pull you out of retirement just to uh, just to play it for us. Well, thank you very much. Now, now, when it <laughs> when it came to releasing this album, you, you did something slightly unique in that you released a series of sort of um, chapters, yeah, which which should have um, promoted the album. What, what was the sort of reasoning behind that? Uh, well, a large part of the reasoning was we had been go- pretty much gone for mm-hmm. five years. You know, um, I did a couple of Liberty and Justice songs in the interim, but yep. overall, as a presence, Line of Fire was just gone. You know, so we wanted to kind of remind people that, you know, we're still here. <laughs> we haven't really gone anywhere. It just looks like it. So we thought we would give people uh, little bits and pieces of how the album came together and what had gone on mm-hmm. in the last five years. Yeah. You know, so they didn't feel like we had just, you know, abandoned them or anything. How did you find the response from fans? Because, I mean, over here, I mean, quite a few people, I mean, I got links from you about it, and I got links from the label, and but fans were sending me links as well, so it obviously was working in the UK. Yeah, people, you know, we get emails and get responses, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly accessible online. People know how to find me, so... I, I know where to find you. <laughs> you know where to find me. <laughs> You're always posting... You're always posting on one message board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, people know how to get me. So I get private messages, I get emails, I get things. And pe- people seem to really dig it. You know, they like the, they, they like the videos we put out. And um, after they were all done, we meshed them together into one little 20-minute documentary. Right. You know, so that you can, you can just watch them all at one time. And it, it, people, people liked it. They, they appreciated us coming out and saying hey this is where we've been this is what happened mm-hmm. and as it led up to the release of the record it gave them a, hopefully it kind of gave them something to look forward to yeah know? what what how have you found the response from from the media on the on the new album a couple of reviews i've seen have been very favorable people seem, i guess again they seem to like it you know which i'm we're all very pleased about you know we put a lot of time and uh, a lot of effort into it and we were happy with it and it's just, it's really, uh, it's great to see other people have the kind of response they've had, because not only from the media, but, you know, the press has liked it, um, different web zines and different, you know, uh, review sites and things like that have liked it. You, people like you guys are playing us on the radio, so that's that's really, really cool. And just the response just from fans in general. Again, I get messages and emails, Nikki gets messages and emails just from people that bought the record and are just loving it, and it just, that's why we do it. Mm-hmm. You know, we you know we we make the music because we love the music, and then when it gets out there and people have the kind of reactions they have, it just it's it's great. Mm-hmm. 
so glad people are enjoying it. I'm pretty sure we discussed this before, but I mean, Tribunal Records traditionally hasn't hasn't been a melodic label, has it? But I think you know, <laughs> is there something about Line of Fire that the man who runs the label really likes? Because you know, you are an exception to the rule with the stuff they normally release. Yeah, Tribunal is definitely more of a, a, a metalcore mm -hmm. kind of a kill switch engage type of record, you know, uh, a label, you know. And uh, it turns out the guy that runs the label, Matt, is just a huge AOR fan. I mean, <laughs> huge AOR fan. Journey is his favorite band in the entire world. Oh, okay. So he and I knew each other, and because uh, I used to play in metal bands, and we used to work at the same record store, so you know we knew each other. And I was like, hey, check out this record I'm working on. Had no idea. I wasn't even thinking about Tribunal putting it out, but he flipped his wig. That was the first record. He, yep. he flipped over it. They wanted to put it out, so we're like, okay. <laughs> so he put it out, and he's been, he's loved it ever since. And he, and and Matt, I'm gonna tell you, the Tribunal worked really really hard on this second record. Yeah. I mean, he he persevered right along with us over those five years to get this record out, mm -hmm. and um, he worked just as hard as anybody in the band. Excellent. Well, I think you've done a really good job, and I, as I say, I hope you don't wait five years for the next one. But uh, bear in mind, I think there's a lot of people out there who would love to see you live. Oh, 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 believe me, we'd love to see us live, too. We'd love to come play for you. That would be brilliant. That's fine. Any time you like, the studio's here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Sean, thanks for joining us on ARFM. We wish you all the best with this. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for all your support of the band and, and, and of me, and, and I, I can't say enough about it. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you. It's not a problem. And we're going to play out with another track. You actually picked this one, so um, what's, what, what's the reason behind it? I, I just love the song. This is this is a song that Nikki wrote, and to me, it's one of the the best songs that Nikki's ever written. And uh, apart from Nikki, I think it's just I was a fan of this song before we formed Line of Fire. Like I said, this is a song that Nikki had written already, and I just loved it. And that's all I can say about it. I think it's a great, great song. I think it's got a great melody to it, and I love singing it. I was this was the one song I was looking forward to singing the most when we started to make the record. I was really wanting to sing this song, so I was really glad I had the opportunity. Great stuff. Right, from Line of Fire's brand new album, Momentum, it's out on Tribunal Records. This is I'll Be The One Tonight.